<laughs> so we're here at the Lenaro Connect, and uh, you have a special badge right here, and uh, this is uh, this is an accelerator. So who are this you? Is a, um, so I'm David Abdurrahmanov. I work for Fermi National Acceleration Laboratory in the U.S. and I'm fully based in Geneva, CERN, and I work for a very beautiful uh, LHC experiment called CMS, and that's our detector. And yesterday you had the keynote here. What were you talking about? I was talking about using 64-bit ARM as a platform for high-energy physics and scientific computing in general. So you're making all these uh, ARM processors work in the CERN grid? What is your job? Uh, so my job is to make sure that our CMS experiment software works on various platforms, including 64-bit ARM and Power8, together with 64-bit Intel platforms. So I'm looking into new alternatives like 64-bit ARM, and that's why we're here in Lenaro to talk about it. So it's very important for these giant worldwide supercomputing grids to have uh, low power, low cost, uh, high performance, right? We are looking into multiple alternatives at this point, and one of these alternatives could be 64-bit ARM processors, and particularly those uh, low-power, high-density systems, so we can actually pack a lot of compute powers into our racks. So you want to get a higher throughput per, per watt. So, um, what, what, what's working so far? What have you been testing? Which platforms? Um, so, in particular, we are looking into two new alternatives to the Intel, that's 64-bit ARM, as I mentioned before, and also Power8 systems. And mostly, we're currently focusing on 64-bit ARM. So, we have demonstrated that our software, basically doing everything from raw data to analysis to reconstructions, works. We have done some initial looking into a numerical comparison, and that looks very promising. Most of the numbers are at zero, all the differences mostly at zero, the sum of variations. Uh, we showed a uh, full stack working, so basically as an, um, our software working, we managed to send a job from 64-bit Intel platform to 64-bit ARM platform across the continent, got, got the job executed, we have remote uh, reads and writes of files working, so more or less we demonstrated that 64-bit ARM is a potentially valuable architecture in WSG, that's worldwide IC computing grid. And you run uh, scientific Linux on there, right? Yes. Is yeah. this a CERN-made uh, Linux? What is a scientific Linux? Scientific Linux is a, a, um, a rebuild of friendly enterprise Linux, and it was developed by several universities, and particularly now it's developed by CERN and I believe also Fermilab. So it's a special kind of a, a Linux that's optimal for sharing uh, big jobs between huge computing centers yes. around the world? We, we needed a common operating system between all the computer centers. So that, that double LCD, that LHC computing grid, uh, we have a compute power directly at CERN, but we also combine uh, compute power from 170 computer centers. And we had to have something very common between them. And the decision was to have uh, Scientific Linux, CentOS, and Reddit Enterprise Linux operating system. That's a common base for everything. So there's lots of computing centers around the world. How many yes. are there? Um, so we using 170 computer centers around the world. I believe, 170. Yes, from 40, 40 plus countries. So what is a computing center? Is like a, a building like this full of computers? What is a computing center? It varies for definitions. If you look at CERN, we do have a 3.5 megawatts compute center with tens of thousands of cores, uh, two floor. Um, it's a very old one, built about 40 years ago, originally for supercomputers but now it's uh, mostly for the computer farms. Um, then we have a tier one computer sites, which are also the bigger ones. They have a lot more compute power. They also have tape storages, so we actually send, we have at least two copies of all the data in those tier ones. And then we go have a tier two computer sites, which majority of all the computer sites around uh, WCG. And those vary between the sizes. It could be big, it could be actually small. And then you have the last layer, which could be a very local, very smallish computer center, just several of the nodes, you know, hundreds of cores, maybe a thousand of cores, but you know, for, for the locally, for specific physicists to do the analysis. So uh, there's lots of different Intel processors in, from different years. Yes. And a few AMD processors. Correct. And so far, not so much other stuff? Um, the idea was, I mean, the whole WCG, I think, I believe, it was actually born about 2,000 years, and we, it was went for the commodity. So we needed something, ability to build once and run everywhere. 
and that's why we got the original was built on 32-bit Intel platform and finally actually moved to 64-bit Intel platform but that's a common base again we have a common operating system and we have a common instruction set which currently is 64-bit Intel so right now uh, the Higgs boson is found but need to analyze a lot of things and uh, find out where we're from right and the, the where life comes from exploding these atoms and all that stuff so there's a lot of more uh, servers that need to be bought in the next few years by all these computing centers around the world yes so they have to be sure they get the best power performance uh, price so one of the biggest challenge we currently facing is that we did our initial run which we called the run one we, we did run from 2010 to 2012 that's the data we used to actually say uh, that CMS and Atlas to discover the Higgs boson and people actually received a Nobel Prize for that. Now we had the long shutdown about of 18 months when we actually updated detectors, LHC and everything. And now we're back to actually taking physics data at higher energy levels. So that's what you call the run two for another two to three years. But we're gonna be operating for more than 10 years after that. And the amount of data we're gonna get is astronomical. It's huge and it's impossible to process this with Intel, right? I'm just joking, <laughs> but uh, we need, I mean, the planet needs uh, more computing at lower power, right? This is one of the things they're looking. So a CMS experiment in particular, we're forecasting that in the next 15 years, we're going to have two to three orders of magnitude more data, and we still need to process the data in a meaningful time. So we're looking at alternatives like Xeon 5s, GPUs, also as, as mentioned, ARM and power rate architectures as a potential alternatives. So you've checked in here the Lunar Connect there's a lot of SOC guys. A All lot the of different them. companies you have meetings? Yes I have a lot of meetings. I probably met most of the components which did announce 64-bit silicons. And you are testing as many development boards as you can right? That's what we're trying to do. You're uh, trying to get more? I'm trying. I'm, I'm here in Lunar. I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to get all the hardware I can get. Uh, test the latest and greatest stuff. And you, but you prefer to get stuff that's actually mass-produced possible, right? You don't want stuff that's only just a development board, right? You can't just buy a thousand development boards and put them in a, in a grid. You in, want to buy real servers. And in order to make a viable demonstrator cluster which we are building at Princeton University, we want to use a production system. You know, people are going to buy a production system, so we want to have a production system. So we want to have very familiar operating system that we have also and currently available on our UC computing grid, which again would be CentOS and Red Enterprise Linux server for ARM developer preview. So we are targeting those two operating systems at this point. What is CentOS? Why, why is it so good to use? Are they very good guys to optimize for what you need? So CentOS is very similar to Scientific Linux. Again, it's a full rebuild of uh, Red Enterprise Linux, um, basically removing the trademark. Um, they are, they, are, they are supporting you? We, so we decided for a next generation operating system to move to CentOS 7 and instead of having Scientific Linux and in, instead of rebuilding everything we're going to have a special interest group at CERN just, so we're going to producing just the needed bits uh, you know, specific packages that we need for certain infrastructure but again we're going to be now more relying on the community side Nice So. Uh... CERN invented the web, right? It came well, out of there, and then uh, maybe CERN is going to invent a 64-bit ARM uh, server. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, somebody needs to come and say, hey, we need a large quantity, and then somebody will just deliver the order. We have to look into multiple silicon vendors. We have to figure out what's the roadmaps and what direction everything going. We have to talk to various hardware vendors. We have to see if 64-bit ARM is going to be a viable tool for scientific computing. It's, it's just the beginning, um, we have to, again, we have to discuss, we have to make collaborations, we have to see if it's available, and, you know, we have to get all the people, we have to get all the people excited, and get, get them to a specific direction, and see where it goes. And there's uh, something like 12 billion ARM processors sold every year, and going all these smartphones, and, but there's also a lot of people who have desktops, and Chromebooks, and all that stuff, and these CPUs could be used, maybe for helping you out or what? Yes, could, could you connect somehow? Um, so there are some projects that happen in LHC and there is LHC at home and they're also now going to soonish have CMS at home. 
So this is kind of this of project. If your computer is sitting in silent at home, as for example during the night, you could be doing some uh, some good for CERN and, for example, running simulations. So we do have this kind of a project. Um, is it the same computing stuff that happens in the grid, or is it different different pieces that people can do at home? It's similar. You, you download the platforms. You decide what you're going to run. Once you make a decision, the computer goes idle. You can use those cycles to process our data. But you wouldn't want people to just pollute the whole planet with the Intel CPUs everywhere, right? <laughs> so it, it, maybe it's, it's smart if it runs on Android and runs on ARM and runs on all, the, all these things. We have tested initially running our CMSSW. We ported it initially to 32-bit uh, SOCs, and that was based on Exynos 4, 4 5, and Tegra K1. Now we're looking in 64 bit arm land. All right, so it's fun to talk with these Linaro guys? Yes, definitely. This is the best place. If you're looking for 64 bit arm, this is the best place to, to come to and talk to your people. Cool, so let's go look for some SOCs over there. <laughs>